Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Hairless Ape, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, this is Hairless Ape with my next donation brother. I would like you to research PSYOP Warfare, but only if you have no experience. However, I think that you do have experience, so if so, could you please explain the pros and cons of the basic PSYOP operation? I understand this may take some time, so there's no worry on my part. Keep on keeping on, never give up, and never surrender. Well, Hairless Ape, thanks for your donation as well as your topic. I've spoken before about how women use things like passive aggressiveness, gaslighting, as well as being quiet to manipulate men into thinking that she's one of the good girls. Maybe she'll say, not tonight, honey, I'm not in the mood because she's generally not interested in sex anymore, but wants you to think that it's only her mood today and not a general thing as she gets into her 30s and beyond and as her eggs dry up like sun-dried tomatoes. For women, psychological warfare is the only weapon they have in their arsenal, so therefore they're usually quite gifted at it when compared to men. I might get back to these things a bit later, but now I'd like to discuss more specific psyops or psychological operations. According to Wikipedia, they say that psyops are this, and I quote, are planned operations to convey selected information and indicators to audiences to influence their emotions, motives, objective reasoning, and ultimately the behavior of governments, organizations, groups, and individuals, unquote. Whenever I think of planned operations by the government or by private companies, the first thing that comes to my mind is Edward Barnays and the documentary called The Century of the Self. I put a link to it in the description, and he's the grandfather of public relations. So if you're waging a psychological war on someone or you're trying to influence them, then you need to understand the very early days of public relations and propaganda, as it was called back in the day. That's what PSYOPs really are, another fancy word for propaganda. But since the word propaganda is connected to the Germans during the Second World War as well as Uncle Adolf, it's easier to call it something else. That in itself is a PSYOP. Think back to when women got the vote in the early 20th century. How did Edward Barnes influence women to vote for his political clients? He was the first one to invite celebrities to the White House and have the president meet them while he was on live radio or doing a newsreel. That way they would take those good feelings they had for celebrities and associate them with the president, as well as other politicians. When it finally came time to vote and they were next to the ballot box, they would vote their emotions and not because of the issues. That's also how Canada's cuck Prime Minister Justin Trudeau got elected. It all came down to the status of his father's last name. All those 60 and 70 year old women that found his father hot back in the 1960s and 70s voted for his son because it brought back some naughty sexual fantasies. That's psychological warfare at its finest. Now I'd like to talk about psyops and how propaganda influences women to do both positive things in this world and negative. Yes, it's true that women have the ability to influence men and control us using psychological forms of warfare. But smart men can also use media and mold the public opinion to affect the general behaviors of women without them even knowing it. It's quite easy. You find people and things that give status, and you associate those brands with your message, and women will connect the two. Remember, it's all about the way it makes them feel. If a woman thinks that Armani suits are attractive and bring men status, and she sees a man wearing one, she will instantly associate the brand to him. One minute he's wearing no-name brand clothing and driving a Kia, and the next minute he's in a BMW wearing an Armani suit, and she sees him completely differently. Most BMWs these days are shitboxes and constantly breaking down. But it doesn't matter because she only sees the logo and the brand. All the other stuff doesn't matter anymore. She connects the money and resources to that brand, and that's how she recognizes the man she wants to basically let into her pants. She's not even thinking about it consciously. It just happens because she's been conditioned through consumerism her entire life. Edward Barnes also manipulated women to start smoking back during the First World War by getting famous New York socialite madams to light up and smoke cigarettes and got the media to ask them questions while they were doing it. The ordinary women reading about these wealthy women that were smoking as well thought to themselves, well, if these famous women with high social status are smoking cigarettes to show their support for the war, so will I. What they didn't understand is that Barnes was hired by the tobacco industry to find a way to market to women and get them to smoke as well. One minute women thought that smoking was unacceptable, and the next, it was not only okay, but they actually had higher status if they were a smoking lady. That's propaganda in public relations. Of course, governments like the American one use propaganda and psyops all the time. During the first Gulf War in the early 90s, there was the whole babies being thrown out of incubator speech in Washington, D.C. It got the government to give permission for the Gulf War to happen. It was eventually proven false. Then you have the second Gulf War with Bush W-2. Everyone remembers the weapons of mass destruction speech, and again, America goes to war because of a lie, and thousands of young men spill their blood in the sand 
because of that law as well. But if the government said that the real reason we're going to Iraq or Afghanistan is so we could destroy their country and expose them to American values like feminism to destroy their extremely high birth rates, not only wouldn't men fight for it, but they wouldn't understand it. Both of those countries have the highest birth rates in the Middle East. The way I see it, America wasn't attacking Iran because they got the birth rate down to 1.7. Turkey is also under replacement levels as well. Muslim countries are about 30 years behind white, formerly Christian ones. That's the psychology behind it. No one is telling Muslims that all the porn accessible on their cell phones and computers is going to destroy their fertility rate. Many of you also remember the giant statue of Saddam Hussein that was toppled when the Americans came into Baghdad. Well, that was a stage psyop designed to remind people of the statues that fell in the Soviet Union at the end of communism, to make Americans believe that the mission was a success. The internet, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the biggest psyops of all time. Information is only power when you know how to filter it properly. When you give people unlimited amounts of knowledge, but you don't teach them how to analyze it and make good use of it, it basically makes the population dumber and dumber. Like Jim Carrey at the back of a pocket rocket with a bad haircut and a missing tooth. How's that for both positive and negative? Western leftist governments are using the political correctness of feminism and cultural Marxism to impoverish the people to create more votes for themselves. They promise women free stuff and people believe it because it's all well crafted and it resonates with those people. The difference between the psychological warfare their governments use on the people versus the women's psychological warfare on the individual man is the medium. Women use their own bodies to broadcast attractiveness and they use their words to broadcast meaning. Everything about the way that a woman looks is a lie, so how can you believe a word that she says? Yet most men do so because we're biologically programmed based on the visual inputs a woman uses. That's why corporations use attractive women in retail sales and advertising. They're tapping into the same type of psychology. Women craft their personal psyops carefully, slowly, and take their time implementing them. But it's usually on one person or group of people. The mass media, including YouTube and the internet, can influence millions of people using similar techniques. There are deliberate things that people do as well to employ psychological manipulation. I'll give away one of my secrets that I learned from my sales history. Back when I was selling investments, I was taught that when you ask people to do something for you, you always ask them to do three different things at the same time. I can ask someone to simply go and bring me a glass of water. Or I can ask someone to go to the kitchen, pour me some water into a glass, and then bring it back to me. The first approach is straightforward and gets people to do only one task, to bring you the glass of water, which means they're far less likely to bring it. The second approach uses three different tasks to do the same thing. Going to the kitchen, pouring water, and then bringing it back. Asking people to do three different things in a row is far more effective because it shuts off their ability to rationalize why they're doing something. So when I ask people to smash the like button, bang the bell, and visit the MGTOWN mystery link, I'm employing the same technique to get people to do those three things. If I asked for just one of them, people would be a lot less likely to do it. Don't hate me for it, but it seems to work. Just like Turd Flinging Monkey will only let people hear his full podcast if you send him a donation through Patreon. It employs an understanding of human psychology to provide incentives to people for certain types of behavior. Men are more likely to employ mass psychological warfare, while women are more likely to do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. In the world of politics and war, sometimes you have to step up your game if the propaganda doesn't work. I remember back in 1999 when former Yugoslavia was being bombed by NATO. They managed to knock down one of America's stealth fighter bombers and the propaganda was absolutely awesome because they put the wreckage on a cart and hauled it away with a donkey. Then their television station started producing other propaganda that was very effective at convincing the people to become more nationalistic. They had teddy bears hanging from the trees and sad music and the population got increasingly pissed off at NATO. In the end, however, NATO bombed the television station so the people wouldn't see any of those images anymore. They also couldn't bomb the government and military into submission, so they won the war by bombing the infrastructure like water, electricity, and demoralizing the population until they handed over their leader, Milosevic. When you're sitting in a cold room shivering and you basically can't take a hot shower and you stink, your nationalism tends to evaporate rather quickly. How's that for psychological warfare? Feminism is psychological warfare against men, just like MGTOW is psychological warfare against women. Feminism tries to convince men to hand over their resources to women because of so-called equality, while MGTOW tells men not to hand over those resources to them. Feminism is all about convincing men to work for free as slaves on the plantation while spewing out the lie of equality. MGTOW is about convincing men to free ourselves from the slavery of the plantation and women and gynocentrism and start working for ourselves instead of giving away our labor and spoils for nothing. 
It looks as though with explosive growth of MGTOW, we're winning the war slowly but surely. Once we get more searches on Google than feminism in most of the Western countries out there that matter, that's when feminists are going to spill out of their trailer parks and try to fight us in the most irrational of ways, probably claiming that there's some vast patriarchal conspiracy for men to outdo feminism or some other nonsense. Maybe they will claim that there's some sort of MGTOW feminist gap out there and they have to become more visible than us once again. That it's just not fair anymore. Every time I look and see MGTOW growing in Google Trends, it makes me think that in a big way, I'm partially responsible for inspiring many of the new MGTOW channels out there to keep spreading the knowledge of female nature. That's the real PSYOP. Not the feminists like Lacey Green Panties and others defecting from feminism and becoming skeptics. But that too is psychological warfare of a different sort. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Hairless Ape, for your donation as well as your topic. Hopefully you learned something new about PSYOPs. Remember those three things. Smash the like button, bang the bell, and check out the MGTOW mystery link. And I'm not trying to be a prick, it's just what it is. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. If you want to get the video for the day after tomorrow, then subscribe to me on Minds.com. No tricks there, I just want to make sure I have a backup to YouTube in case it ever goes down. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the PMS mind games away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.